All right, today, everybody, we're going to be talking about 7.4a. That's the TEKS that's there on the screen. Identifying proportional relationships. Now, 7.4a uh, talks about how we can represent a constant rate of change in mathematical and real-world problems given uh, pictorial, tabular, uh, verbal, numeric, graphical, and algebraic representations, including such examples as the distance formula, which is distance, will equal um, a rate times an amount of time, okay? So if you notice there on the screen, the example says that a house cleaning company charges $45 per hour. Is this a relationship, a proportional relationship? Now explain. Now, as it says there, the more time you choose to obligate that particular uh, cleaning service, the more money you will pay, and there is a direct relationship, whereas one hour, of course, will be $45, as we see there. Two hours will be 90, that's 45 times two, three is um, going to be 45 times three, so on and so forth. Now, what we can do is we can make these values into ordered pairs. Now, how do we do that? We know that time typically is going to be your x value, and this is going to be your y. So when um, we have a table, typically speaking, if it is a um, horizontal representation, we know that this top value is going to be x, this bottom is going to be y. If it's presented in a vertical format, x normally is on the left, and y is normally on the right. Now, a way for you to confirm that is that we know that y is going to be our dependent value. Is this value going to be dependent, um, again, because of the fact that something is happening in x, and that's, that is going to be yes. So again, whatever value that we have here for the cost is going to depend upon the amount that is here for the time, okay? That stands to reason that your cost will de depend on how long you choose to have the cleaning surface um, be at your home, for example. Now again, since this is x, this is y, this is going to be considered as a coordinate pair, um, uh, or coordinates, I should say, or an ordered pair. We have here the different ordered pairs where we have x and y, 1 and 45 x and y, 2 and 90, okay? So you can also graph those ordered pairs. So if you notice, I have on my x-axis time, because x is here. We have on my y-axis total cost, because y is here. So if you notice, it is simply plotted along these particular lines. And the graph is a line that goes through the origin. We know that any line that goes through the origin is going to be a proportional relationship. There's a direct relationship between um, your uh, rate and your x value. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to an example that I can explain. So as you notice here in our example, we have Jared, and he is renting bowling shoes for $6 and pays $5 uh, per bowling game, okay? We want to go ahead and graph the data. And now, is this relationship a proportional relationship? Is, they, is there excuse me, a direct relationship between the amount of the bowling game and the amount of the cost? So let's go ahead and analyze this. We see that there are two games played. And we know that each game is going to be $5. But in this particular case, we have one game that is worth 11 So is that relationship going to be something that is proportional? We have two games and it's $16. Huh. I do know that again, $5 per game, does that equal two times five? Now let's go ahead and get some additional information. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my um, to my screen so I can start writing. All right, so what I wanna start by doing is writing down some things that we know, okay? So the things that I know so far is that Jared um, plays, um, bowling games at five dollars per game okay we said that bowling shoes are six dollars okay so those are the things that we know that are given to us in this particular problem now the question was asking is this relationship going to be proportional um, and we're going to look at constant rates of change and how we can convert that into um, algebraic um, notation as well. Okay, so I want to go ahead and do myself a version of 
the graph as well. And let's go ahead and remind ourselves what that empty graph looked like. Okay, we have the origin here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and recreate this off camera. It looks to be that. It is skip counting um, by tens. Um, and it looks to be um, at this point that each intermediary tick mark is going to be five. So we are going to label the y-axis as total cost your x-axis as the number of gains okay so so far we look and we have a verbal uh, description here we have a tabular representation we have um, a graphic representation which i'm going to do and i'm also going to represent this with a um, an equational or algebraic uh, method of notating what the actual data is actually saying okay so if we switch back over so in the meanwhile, what I've done is I have recreated that uh, graph. I'm not going to draw any of the lines here, and I know that my graph is imperfect. However, it'll uh, be a good approximation for that linear relationship. Okay, we've written down what we know. Um, I am also going to draw a, the, the table here. We know that this is our x value, this is our y value. Okay, we've already labeled these here. Um, and again, let's go back. So we have that data. So I can write that down. This is 1, 11, 2. It's always super important that you try to make sure that you're very careful with finding your um, information. Okay, so I will switch back now to what we have written. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, try my best to actually um, note these here on the graph. So I have uh, 1 and 11. Now I know that this is going to be my 1. Uh, this is going to be um, counting on by 5s in between. So it's going to be somewhere in there. And I'm going to try my best to make sure that it's approximated properly. We have 2 and 16, which is probably going to be somewhere in there. We have... 3 and 21 and I probably want to try to move this over a little bit it's more in the middle 3 and 21 is going to be somewhere here okay and then 4 and 26 is going to be somewhere in there okay now although my drawing isn't perfect this is going to represent a linear relationship um, now if I am going to try to also do my best to extend this line out to approximate where it's going to actually hit my y-axis. Now, we know that a proportional relationship is any one where the um, uh, line is going to actually go through your origin. If it doesn't go through the origin and the origin is there, then if we know that it hits somewhere on the y-axis above the origin, we know that this is going to be not proportional. Now, being that I already know that by visually looking it out, I'm now going to try to figure out what my actual equation is. So again, we have the verbal representation, which was the problem. We have the graphic representation. We have the tabular representation. Now we're going to work on the equation. Now, I have been told that according to this particular problem, that again, the games are $5 and the shoes are 6 So I now know that there's not going to be a direct relationship between the amount that you actually pay in, uh, per game and the, um, what the equation will read. Anytime that we have a relationship that is not represented by this particular formula, and I'll explain this more in other videos where this is my rate of change times my x value is going to equal what is my y value, then I know that it's my equation is going to look like something different. This is a proportional relationship. And then I know that, um, again, in a non-proportional relationship, that my equation is going to look like something like this. Now, k and m virtually the same thing no real distinction it represents some rate of change that is constant okay so 
I need to figure out what my difference in values would be. So every time I go up in terms of my values of x, it's going to be 1. Every time I go over in terms of my values of y, it's going to be plus 5. Okay? So now I'm going to compare my y change to my x change. And that's going to be a change of, um, excuse me, Five. Let me write that a little bit better. That's a positive 5 and a positive 1. Okay. So in this particular case, I know that my change is going to be um, a change of 5 to 1. Okay. Now, that still doesn't help me, though, unless I set up an equation frame. Okay. Now, I know that y, as it has over here, is going to equal my rate of change. My rate of change is going to be 5 times my x value plus this particular part right here is where I'm going to account for the re remaining part of that. So 5 times 1 is going to give me what? Because again 5 times some value of x is going to give me 5. Now what is the additional amount that I need to add to that in order to get to this y value? You guessed it, it's the amount of those shoes. Okay. So again, I have here that my equation is going to be y is equal to 5 times x plus 6. This is my algebraic notation of this whole situation. So again, you're sort of toggling between four different things when we're talking about this particular t. Okay, now let's go ahead and test, the, test my formula out. Let's take this value. We're going to pretend like we don't have that already. And I'm going to plug this in. I'm trying to pretend... As if I have, I, if, as if I don't know this particular value of y. So y is going to equal 5 times 2. That's my value of x from above plus 6. Let's see if this works out. 10 plus 6 should equal a value of 16. So we know that we have the right formula because it does add up to be that. Let's look at the, la the another one just for the sake of showing additional examples. So again, this is going to be 15 plus 6. We're going to pretend like we don't know that. We just plugged in this value of x. That's 21. Did this come out to be 21? Absolutely. Okay. And that's pretty much the long and short of 7.4a. Okay. So at this point, if you have any additional questions, please ask me in class. Come to a tutorial session on Tuesday or Thursday. And as always, I will see you tomorrow.